Good evening, everybody. Welcome again to worship tonight here at Flame of Faith United Methodist Church in West Fargo. My name is Jansen. I'm a worship leader here. I am filling in for Pastor Sarah while she's gone. I'm also the administrative assistant in the office, and I shouldn't list all the things that, that I eventually do. There's, there's lots of them. Uh-oh, it's not going. If you're interested in this evening's order of worship, you can head to our website, flameoffaithumc.org, and click on the button that says Order of Worship. It'll take you to a page that has the whole order of the service, and there's also a PDF file you can download that has, let's see, well, it usually has the lyrics, prayers, scripture, and any spoken parts. And then sometimes I put fun things in there. I don't think I did this week, though. I think this was a busy week. So getting everything prepared for Sunday. And I should mention right now that there's no in-person worship on Sunday. Sunday is uh, pre-recorded. It'll, it'll uh, start broadcasting. It'll debut. It'll premiere at the regular time of the service. 
So we still have a service, we still have a speaker, and we still have songs and prayers and all that, but not here at the church, which, which will be nice. I love it, but it'll be nice. So yeah, the PDF file is pretty plain this week, but everything you need to know is in there. And then now I'd like to transition us into a time of, of prayer. We'll start with a time of silent prayer. I will transition us into a pastoral prayer, and then we will come together at the end for the Lord's Prayer. The words will be on the screen, the version that we say during this service, but please pray whatever tradition you're used to, whether it's sins, debts, trespasses. It, it's all, it's all, we're all equal in God's eyes, so sin, sins, <clears throat> debtors, and trespasses, it's, it's all equal too. And if you have prayer requests, please let us know. Please let me know so I will know how to pray for you. The email's on the screen. The phone number's on the screen. The address will be on the screen in a little bit. Please contact us and let us know. Let us pray. Gracious God, in love you created us, and in love you sustain us day after day. We pray for those who refuse to participate in violence or injustice, those who courageously stand up for what they know is right, regardless of the personal consequences. We offer our prayers for the world around us. We pray for those who find themselves in bondage, those oppressed by governments or economic systems, those enslaved by personal addictions. We pray for all those who suffer today, whether it's physically, emotionally, or spiritually. God, may your presence surround and sustain each one so that they may know your love and live. And we pray for all the members of your body here on earth. God, break down the barriers that divide us from one another. Unite us in our common allegiance to you as Lord and Savior. Grant us compassion and humility in our relationships. Release the gifts you have given to us so that we can use them to build your kingdom. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray as he taught us to pray together as one people, saying, Our God in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I apologize, I forget technology things. When Pastor Sarah's here, she is the director and producer, and it's all super smooth for me, and then I forget, right, you got this clicker, you have to change the slides, remember? Now comes the time of our offering, where we give of ourselves, our tithes, our gifts and talents, our lives. You can give online through our website, flameoffaithumc.org slash donate. You can use the Give Plus app. Just find us on their Flame of Faith United Methodist Church. And as I said, the address is on the screen. You can just send old-fashioned paper checks. Still work just fine. Bank still takes them. So you can do that too. And if you're here in the sanctuary, there's a plate at the door there and a plate at the door here. Now please join me in praying over this evening's offering. Powerful God. Multiply these gifts so that our faith community is empowered to minister to the needs of your children. We are secure in knowing that by serving our brothers and sisters locally and globally, we serve you faithfully. Accept these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. time 
of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation When all is dark, you help us see There is only one salvation We believe We believe that he conquered death We believe in the resurrection And he's coming back again We believe So let our faith be more than anthems Greater than the songs we and temptations we believe we believe we believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ we believe in the Holy Spirit and he's given us new life we believe in the crucifixion We believe in the Holy Spirit and it's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. Hi, my name is Jana Rasif, and today I'll be doing your scripture lesson and your sermon. So today's scripture is Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, the armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 
Therefore, put on your full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after everything you have done, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Our second scripture lesson for today is Proverbs 18.21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So what really is casting out evil? Well, this Ephesian scripture talks about it as its rulers, authorities, and the forces and powers of the dark. Well, what does that mean? Personally, I think most of the time, evil presents itself in words. Hence the tongue of power of life and death. And I think the scary thing on the news or the whispers in someone's head to say or do the evil things. I think that is the powers of the dark. But God gives us this armor, this amazing armor, to battle the evil spirits with. He sets us up in a world with this Spartan look and tells us he's here to protect us. But we still have to fight the good fight. We can't just give up there. When temptation comes, we have to fight it and choose the power of life. Or we could choose the power of death, but that wouldn't be the greatest option. And we do sometimes. But what really is the power of life and death? I think this proverb is saying that we can choose to spread kindness and love, or we can spread rumors and lies about people and say cruel things to them and about them. And we will eat its fruit. Now, we're not eating an apple or an orange, but we're going to feel the consequences of it, whether it's good or bad, life or death. What we speak, we will feel the consequences of. And God tests our ability to recognize these good or evil tongues. And he wants us to use this armor that he gives us. And he does it in all sorts of instances. As Christians, we talk about the big stuff a lot. We talk about sickness, which isn't so good. We talk about confirmations, weddings, graduations, and we love those things, and we pray about them, and we talk about these huge life stones. We talk about them all the time, and we pray about them, and we celebrate them, and we mourn in them. But good and evil works in small ways, too. Good and evil are presented to us every day. And we might not always see them. But I encourage you to take a deep breath. And think of a small time that you clashed with the powers of evil. So one that I have is this really vivid memory that wasn't really long after my confirmation and my baptism. It was a week or two after, so after this huge, long faith journey, I was confronted with a tongue of evil. A teacher at my school had a comment about my faith, which she honestly wouldn't have known about. She's not very involved in my life. She wouldn't have known about my faith or anything about it. This teacher was interesting. She had commonly complained about not being able to be Christian in a school environment. And it was odd, but it's her faith. And a classmate next to me had asked her a question about why Christianity was taught in her school, something she talked a lot about, When she grew up, it was taught in her school. And this teacher, like again, a few weeks after my baptism, 
looks at us and says that we, as students, don't know or understand culture or religion because we didn't have to learn the Ten Commandments in school. And in fact, we probably didn't even know what each of the Ten Commandments were. I really think that this is an odd thing to say to a bunch of impressionable eighth graders. Like, how would you take that as an eighth grader? You're not even a quarter of the way through life and somebody would say that to you and you don't have the life experience that many of you guys do. But how would you take it if someone said that to you now? Like, even now, what would you do about that? And at this point, I really didn't know how to react. I think I stood there in shock and then she kind of just walked away or whatever but I d did not know what to do. This teacher isn't an evil person. She, what she may have said may have been evil, but the tongue has the power of good or bad, life or death. So anyway, I set off to cast out this evil doing. I saddled up my full armor of God and buckled my belt of truth and used my tongue to tell somebody who could do something about a prejudice comment like this. We were eighth graders and she generalized all of us. But with my feet planted in the readiness of the gospel, I reported this inappropriate comment and faced my admin and was told that it didn't matter and there was nothing that they could do. But she probably didn't actually say that. It was just my interpretation of it. So, moving forward, I extinguished the flaming arrows, grabbed my shield of faith, and decided it wasn't worth the fight because I had already won. And I had always kind of known, I mean, I have a pretty good faith, I feel, myself. But I realized in the midst of this wildness that I had nothing to prove to anyone. I didn't need to prove to this teacher that I had faith. If a teacher didn't think I had faith, that was fine. I'm not proving it to her. I don't need to. I had cast out her evil, and I just set it aside. It wasn't something that I needed to set on for a long time. The quote will stick in my brain for a long time, but I was an eighth grader and some teacher who I'm supposed to respect said that to me. But I had my own faith, and that was the important part. But I encourage you on your walks of life, at work, with your kids, talking to anyone, just see what kind of evil things you can hear or that you can find. And before you get angry and trample on it and freak out and go insane, just sit for a minute and think about how you could cast out it. God gives us this full armor of righteousness. So use the full armor of God and consider it the best way. He gives us this amazing helmet to protect us. And just think about how you could cast out this evil. Sometimes it can be really complex, like deciding it's time to bring it further and take the extra step and maybe bring it to heavy authorities. Other times, maybe just sit, think of God, have a prayer, read a story, think of a story, and just renew your faith a little bit. And you can just go about your way, not letting it affect you. Because at the end of the day, God saves us all because we have our faith. And we can and do have the power to cast out the evil.
What God has willed, what God has planned I only know at his right hand Stands one who is my Savior I take him at his word and deed Christ died to save me, this I read thank Jana Russell for delivering our message tonight and for bringing us the scripture of the word. Now please stand and hear this evening's benediction. As we leave this evening, help us to draw strength from God's power and stand firm against all that would corrupt us. May God arm you with truth and righteousness. May Christ Jesus give you words of spirit and life. And may the Holy Spirit draw you near to God's presence and bless you with honor and grace. Amen.